Hey folks, Jamie here. Thank you for tuning in. Before we get started, I would like for you to take a moment and go down below and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave a comment. If you're really feeling generous, maybe share this video to your social media feeds. What that does is make it a lot easier for other people to find a moment of Tiki. I really appreciate it and it helps out a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the show. Welcome to another episode of A Moment of Tiki coming to you from the Lagoon of Mystery, my home tiki bar here in Central Texas. Now, last episode, my 50th episode, I talked about how I built this uh, entire space over the course of the past six years, is it? Wow. But the very first thing I built was the bar itself. Those of you who've been paying attention and following along uh, for a while know that this is not the only bar that I have. If you set the Wayback Machine uh, almost two years now, really, uh, episode 26 to be precise, you will remember that I picked up secondhand a Krypton bar, a Krypton Tiki bar. This was part of the early 2000s uh, Tiki resurgence. Uh, the Krypton bars were sold by a company named Krypton out of Southern California. Uh, Tiki Farm also sold a version of them for a while. And they're pretty cool looking bars. They're small. And this one that I picked up, uh, you know, it needed some TLC. It had been exposed to the elements and wasn't in prime condition. Uh, so I may not be fast with these projects, but I am steady and I work on them a little bit, go away with other projects and come back, but eventually I'll get it finished. And guess what? We're finished. So come on with me and I will show you how I restored the early Tiki Revival Krypton bar. The boomerang bar top is attached to the bar frame by socket head cap screws. Uh, there's three of them. And as these, this was stored outside for some amount of time, these metal screws are pretty gnarly. There's a lot of rust on them and it was just pretty gross. So first thing I did was head to the hardware store and picked up some stainless steel replacements. So this will go in nicely and even though it's going to be stored inside, if it was to go outside for a little bit, it's not going to uh, be affected by any humidity in the air. So first improvement right there. Now detaching boomerang bar top from the bar frame, you can see here how being exposed to the elements, even though it wasn't, if it wasn't directly exposed, but just being out there and changing climate conditions uh, wreaked some havoc on here. It's made from particle board, and you can see the section here where it was protected by the bulk of the bar frame, as opposed to these sections here that were exposed to humidity and the changing conditions. Uh, the Particle board is swelling. Um, there's some crumbling, some damage. Uh, the, the veneer on the inside is um, cracking and showing exposure. So I'm going to sand all this down, uh, get it nice and smooth, and then I'm going to come back and seal the entire thing. So again, if it is ever put outside or anything, it'll be much, much more protected uh, from the elements. To fix uh, this, I'm going to get, use my random orbital sander. I've got uh, 120 sanding grit on the bottom of it, which is fairly aggressive, but there's some fairly uh, aggressive damage here that needs to be taken out. And I'm just going to sand it smooth, I'm not going to get too fancy. After all, this is particle board uh, because I'm sanding here. We do need to wear a respirator mask. I'm not outside, so I don't have a strong wind to depend on to. Uh, carry the dust away and you don't want that inside your lungs. So here we go.
Now I am going to apply a couple of coats of poly to the underside here to seal off this particle board and uh, ensure that, well, basically stop the bleeding so it doesn't get any worse. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be professional, it just has to go on there and seal it off from the elements. I've flipped the bar over and removed the legs from here and yeesh this is where you can see how being stored outside only semi-protected really did a number on it this uh, cardboard sheath over the bottom is moldy it's just nasty it's falling apart uh, at one point it capped the ends of the uh, bamboo here but it hasn't done that for a long time. There are spider eggs and webs and mud dauber nests and all sorts of nasty stuff in the bamboo and we'll get to that in a little bit. <clears throat> there are about a million staples in this um, particle board uh, base right here. The particle board base itself has had some rot, uh, crumbling, breaking apart, swelling, which isn't good. We're going to try and repair that. But first, I need to remove most of these staples. So use a screwdriver to pry one up, then a pair of pliers to pull it the rest of the way. Tedious but straightforward work. You got all the staples removed, and boy, they were just rusted. I mean, it's just crumbling coming up. Uh, the bark cloth is you know, decayed and deteriorated and tearing. And this whole section right here of the particle board is swollen. So what I'm doing is using a chisel to scrape away that swollen bad stuff. And I'm gonna come back and use some wood putty to fill in this gaping hole. Now I know there's a lot of woodworkers out there who are professional and or, or advanced amateurs and they say, you know, no, no, you need to replace this whole thing. Well, I'm trying to restore this without spending more money than it cost to begin with. We're already going to order a bunch of uh, uh, fabric, some custom fabric to replace this and that's going to cost significant. So I'm trying to hold on to this lower shelf, uh, the underside is uh, covered with formica and is still in uh, pretty good shape. It's still functional, but uh, this bottom side needs to be restored a little bit or refurbished, I suppose. So that's what I'm going to try and do here. And we'll see if I can pull it off. I've got all the bad, swollen part of the board carved away. So now, I'm going to use wood putty to patch this and hopefully it's going to work. It's what people online said to do and we all know that the internet never lies, so. Put a generous amount in here. Now for the next step, I want to reinforce the bottom shelf of the bar with plywood. This is particle board. Uh, I already showed you it was damaged. I covered up a lot of the damage, filled in the damaged spots with, with uh, wood filler, but wood filler isn't really structural, uh, especially since uh, the feet of the bar screw into this. I want, I want to add part, uh, plywood. Here, this just quarter inch plywood to reinforce and strengthen it so it has a little bit more durability. I have the square, I've lined it up with the back edge of the lower shelf and I've cut a pattern out of poster board that follows the curvature of the bottom shelf. And what I'm going to do here is line these up 
just use my little pistol grip clamps to clamp these down so it doesn't move on me. I'm going to trace along them. Now I'm going to use a jigsaw to cut this out. <clears throat> Since jigsaws are notorious for creating a lot of tear out and rough cuts, I'm going to line the saw path with blue tape. And hopefully this blue tape will reduce the amount of tear out I have to deal with. I've got my plywood clamped onto the saw horse got the path of the saw laid out and I've got my jigsaw. We're going to commence the cutting. Now I take the plywood off cut from whence I took the semicircular cut for the underside and I use this to mark the cuts so I can complete the entire semicircle because obviously the little piece of plywood that I purchased did not cover the entire bottom shelf. of the bar. Therefore, I'm going to use the scrap and cut these two wings, I suppose, off the side and they're going to go on exact same process as before. And we're back. It's the next day. Uh, between then and now, I thought about the fact that the base had taken uh, significant water damage over the years, so I decided that I wanted to protect it from water. So I coated the plywood with Australian timber oil, which is an oil uh, poly uh, combination. I've never used it before, but I figure, you know, no time like the present, give it a shot. Um, so now I have the plywood clamped onto the base. And what I'm going to do is drill some pilot holes, then use some deck screws to attach it firmly. Now that the new base, uh, plywood base, is anchored onto the bar, it's time to reinstall the bar legs. I've repositioned them where they were originally, and as always, drilling a pilot hole. Now that I have the base stabilized and weatherized and have reattached the legs, it's time to flip the bar back over and get into the serious restoration stuff. This is where we start to have some fun and get to customize it and make it everything I hoped it would be. The leopard skin fabric that lines the inside of the bar looks like it is tufted, but it's actually not. It's all stapled in, you can see, all the way through. So everything that looks like it's tufted is actually just stapled in place. So I need to remove this to get to the bar area behind it to work on the wire. So when I take this out, I'm going to address the tough issue and actually make it tough and better.
Cover button kits are simple to use. They consist of an outer front facing shell with the back that inserts into the shell. You can get them online uh, or fabric stores. Get a template to cut out the proper size of material to fit the button. Once you have that circle of material cut out, you place it into the silicon container. You push down the outer button shell in there, then fold the fabric over it, add the backing, and then press it into place. Simple as that. Pull it out, it snaps together, and you have a fabric covered button. This is the leopard print fabric that was stapled back here. I am not a big fan of staples, so the first thing we need to do to get this ready to reinstall is remove all of these staples and there are quite a lot of them so it's time consuming but you know there's nothing for it you just gotta pluck each and every one of these little metal buggers out the staples in here created the illusion of a tufted fabric even though it wasn't tufted so, I'm going to actually do tufted fabric, and there you have it. You have a tufted fabric button that matches or closely matches the fabric that you are working with. So, the tuft buttons have to be tied, pulled through, and tied to uh, a substrate behind there. So, instead of using staples, I've gotten a thin sheet of plywood. Uh, this is Lao An. It's uh, really cheap from the Philippines. It's like an eighth of an inch thick. And that's important. You don't want to get something thick, otherwise it won't bend. And you want that bending and flexibility for this to work. So I'm setting it up centered as much as possible on the foam rubber cushion, which is wrapped with the leopard print. Now, I have a drill. I'm going to drill through the indent depression that was once held back by staple. It doesn't take much. I have hair wire or jewelry wire. It's very thin and black so it doesn't show up. And I have cut a length, it's about two inches long. Don't really need more than that. I'm going to loop it through the button on the back, twist it a couple of times to hold it secure. Now I'm going to pinch the ends together and thread it through the hole I just drilled. Okay, once it's threaded through, you're going to flip it over. And you can see the wire is coming out the hole on the other side. Now we need to tie it to something to anchor it so it doesn't slide back through. And that's where I have these little bamboo skewers that I've cut into you know, inch and a half lengths. I'm pressing with my knee. Now I'm sure there are better ways to do this. This is, this is just me making it up as I go. Twisting the wire to hold it in place. And then I'm going to twist the skewer a couple of times tighten it. You don't want to tighten too much because this jewelry wire isn't that strong and you can easily snap it. Turn it over and 
there it is. Tough button. Now all I have to do this is like a dozen more times and this panel is all set to reinstall. With all the tufts in place, now it's time to install this foam panel into the lower section. Now, what we've done, instead of staples holding it in place, I'm going to use tension to hold it in place. That's why I use this uh, bendable plywood backing. So we're going to bend it in here, and the plywood is going to try and straighten itself out. It doesn't want to bend. So when we put it in here, the tension is going to press it and hold it in place so we don't need the staples to keep it from popping out. Fingers crossed. There we go, success. It's staying in there, it's gonna stay in there, but in the event of any future need to take this all apart, it'll come out much easier because again, we don't have all those staples anchoring it in there. The mask on the front is anchored on here by four screws. So in order to get the mask off so that I can replace the fabric on the front as well as rewire the eyes, I need to remove these four screws so it is loose. Ratchet screwdriver, go ahead and use my power drill that it's downstairs in the garage and I'm too lazy to go get it. are neutral and the red are positive and look at here it is an original Bosco from what I understand the first hundred or so of these Krypton bars were made and contracted with Bosco to provide the mask to go with it and then after that uh, the Krypton company started cutting their own masks which Bosco wasn't terribly happy about. So, he's a keeper. As for the rest of this, this fabric has to come off and, geez Louise, there are more staples per square inch on this Tiki bar than I think I've seen in an entire Office Depot. This is just insane. Ah. 
Using the fabric that I removed from the front of the bar, I laid it on the new fabric, traced out the dimensions, and then I took a pair of sharp scissors and cut it out. I am replacing the fabric with this. I got spoon flour. This is a heavy weight um, outdoor rated canvas. So I thought that would be the best idea, the best option for this since this is going to get a lot of exposure. Um, unfortunately, the only way to really attach it here now is to uh, staple it. Ironic, considering how much I've been complaining about all the staples I've been battling thus far, but such is life. Turn it upside down because we got to get the bottom. Stretch tight. Very good. Now that I have attached the replacement fabric on the bar, I need to restore the Bosco mask. Now, before it was screwed in through the bar itself, which was a real pain when I had to try and take it off and, uh, to restore, to refurbish this whole thing. So what I've done is placed these brackets on the back and these slide over these screws to hold it in place. Also cut a hole right here for the wire to go through and hopefully this is all going to make it easier to install and remove the Bosco mask. that I removed, I used these to get the dimensions and cut the new fabric. And now I'm going to, again, stapling in place. I'm going to wrap around the inside. Bumper established. Now we're going to put a little vinyl uh, side bead on the This is a bead and kind of rolled over. Anyway, this goes right along the edge and we attach it using what else? Staples. There we go. Tight. right along the edge. We continue all the way down until this is firmly anchored in place. 
Next, we get to install the bamboo. This could be good. These are two of the bamboo slats that I initially removed from the bar. My plan was to just hit them with a coat of amber shellac and leaving it at that, but the more I looked at them and the greater the aging and weather damage they had, uh, it became more apparent that that was far too easy for me. Why just do something simple when something more complex will suffice? So I went and harvested my own bamboo, torched it and dried it and cut it to length, and now really, I think I made the right call here. That looks far more fetching than the old stuff did, even were I to coat it with amber shellac. So, with these new combs, where I split them, I want to run just a quick sanding over the edges to clear away any rough spots, splinters, that sort of thing. Doesn't need to be a lot, just right there on the edge. And we're going to fasten it here, right on the edge of the padding. So line it up straight. And guess what comes next? Anyone? That's right, we're gonna do pilot holes. because bamboo likes nothing better than to sweat. So, inch and a half finishing nail. place and we're off to the races. The builders of the Krypton bar were kind enough to mark on the Laoyan plywood uh, the location of the shelves within the bar. That makes it easy for me to drill pilot holes through the bamboo so that I can sink the nails through the bamboo, through the Laoan plywood, and into a solid substrate behind there to hold the bamboo in place. I place a finishing nail in the hole, tap it into place with the hammer, and then use the nail sink here to make it flush with the bamboo. So, this is the power socket that was built in. And I'm going to replace that with one that's a little larger and more functional. But, I'm gonna show you this. Get a little closer. Staple, right through the middle of the wire, holding it in place, yikes. It's not incredibly great. Uh, we will definitely be replacing that. So here's more wiring. And this is where main wire splits off to light the eyes. And I'm not really sure what the hell is going on in here, but uh, something tells me that's not to code. We are going to fix that as well, definitely. The Krypton bar came with a single plug here, mounted under there for blenders or anything you need to use it for. Um, and it was controlled by an inline switch on the uh, wired plug itself. I want to replace that with uh, a plug socket right here, double socket, 
plus two switches. One switch to control power to the plugs, and then a second switch to control the lighting that I'm building into the bar, plus the eyes on the Bosco Tiki mask. So, I have a metal gang box, uh, two plastic inserts to ensure the wires coming in and out of the box don't rub raw, cut through against the metal here. And I'm going to mount it right back here. So, drill. firmly mounted and now it's time to start wiring. So you can see I've completely replaced all the wire. Uh, one wire is going directly up into the switch box below. There is a switch and second wire coming down and tying into the eyes of the Bosco and I used some basic standard wire connectors here wrap tied the wires together twisted it and then sealed it up with the electrician's tape I also added a couple layers of duct tape right here to blunt any of the staples that are left over from the previous work that man I wasn't going to remove all of these staples good lord look at them all and up here is the finished box. We've got two switches, one for the plugs, one for the lights out front. And I think that's a nice improvement over what we had originally. In addition to just replacing the wiring, I replaced the plug as well with a polarized plug. That uh, is the modern standard. And if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this right. We're reaching the end game now. My refurbishment itself is pretty much complete, but I want to go a little bit farther. And that, I've got LED strip lights. What my intent is, I'm going to do with this. It's a 20 foot length, 20, 25 foot length. I'm going to run them along the inside edge of this bar top. Then, run tape down through the hollowed out bamboo that I placed on the front facade. When I cut the bamboo, I intentionally cut it an inch longer than the previous bamboo that I was replacing, so it extends below the edge of the bar. I am going to run the LED lights through behind the back. So the top section of the bar is illuminated as is the bottom with a continually changing set of lights. I think it's going to look pretty swank when I'm finished. This LED tape has uh, adhesive backing. Now, they don't historically have a very good reputation for being super sticky and dependable, but at this point, it's good enough until I can apply a more permanent adhesive solution. It helps me mount the LED tape into position 
behind the bamboo. And as you can see, the bamboo extends a good inch below the base of the bar, serving to obscure the LED tape. So it'll be more of an indirect lighting effect. And now we come to the final stage of the restoration of the Krypton bar. These glowing eyes in the Bosco mask are a cool idea, but technology wasn't up to it at the time. These are C7 Christmas bulbs, both incandescent, both made of glass, so they are breakable. Their oval egg shape means that they are exposed and can break. Uh, they also get quite hot and the red paint on the glass uh, scuffs and scratches so it doesn't look so hot. What we are going to do is replace them with modern technology. G20 red LED bulbs, candelabra base, screw right in, They're LED. They don't get hot. The outside is hard plastic. It's not unbreakable, but it is much, much more difficult to break than glass. And the faceted round eyes simply look better and more realistic. I think we have a winner. Well, it took a while, but my Krypton bar restoration project is complete. And what better way to break it in than to create a classic daiquiri. Now, I'm going to be using Probotas rum, which is considered one of the absolute best rums for making classic daiquiris. I'm gonna go with three quarter ounces of lime juice. Now, you may be thinking, wow, that was two years, a lot of effort, time, and a little bit of expense as well. And you might be thinking, well, was it worth it? Yeah. I'm gonna say that depends on your perspective. Half an ounce of Camarero syrup. This is not my dream bar, although I think it's really super cool, especially since I've upgraded so much of the way it started. Two ounces of Probitas. But it's not my dream bar, uh, at least for the interior space. Uh, that would be one of those really cool Witkos. But I'm not likely to get a hold of a Witko anytime soon, so this will certainly do until then. But really, I restored this bar, one, because it is a vestige of the early days of the Tiki Revival in the early 2000s, and two, I wanted to see if I could. I wanted to see if I could take this old bar that had some significant issues and make it better than before. Now the thing is, I probably took longer restoring it than they did in building it. And that's even discounting all the times that I let it sit in the garage for months on end. I mean, just actual physical time working on it is probably much, much more than any amount of time they spend putting it together in their factory. But I'm happy with it. I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Happy with my restoration prowess. And absolutely impressed with the degree at which it has been returned to glory. And it's not as large or as functional as my one downstairs, but it's very cool. 
And it will serve me well when I'm hosting friends in this upstairs dookie space, if and when I ever get finished. So, until the next time from Lagoon Mystery, aloha.